Data is a critical part of any sort of digital transformation, but what exactly is data management? I'm gonna talk about that here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And data is often considered a backbone of any organization. It's the information that organizations use to make decisions and understand the overall health of the organization. But so many organizations struggle with data and keeping the data clean and understanding what the data means and making use of the data. So what I wanna talk about today are what are some of those key components of data management and how can you ensure that you have a more effective data component of your digital transformation. The first step is to understand what exactly data is. And there's two major types of data that any organization has. You have the more obvious data transactions, if you will. So things related to sales orders and customer orders, financial transactions, anything that involves a transaction or movement of goods or a change to your general ledger, those are all transactions that get captured in a system. So it's very detailed, granular information that is constantly evolving and is very organic and changes over time as your, your business evolves. So that's transactional data. That's the day-to-day -day stuff and the day-to-day -day transactions that happen and affect your data. You also have master data. And it's not that your master data doesn't change, it's just that it, the master data is more static. It's meant to set sort of a structure or parameters for how the rest of your organization is gonna flow and how processes and data flow through that master data structure. So some examples of master data would be things like a customer master. So you get a new customer and you set them up in your system. You define their name, their address. You might have some parameters of the pricing you've offered them or whatever the case may be. That would be your, your customer master, your customer record. The same is true for a product master. If you have a number of different products or you're introducing new products, you would set up a, a new product master. You also have vendor masters. So any sort of supplier that's providing you goods or services, you would set them up as a supplier in your system. And then of course, there's a general ledger and chart of accounts on the financial side. That's technically considered master data because that's sort of the structure of how you handle your finance and accounting. So it's important to understand that there's really two layers of data. You've got your master data, which is the stuff I just described. And then there's your transactional data, which is the stuff that's the more detailed day-to-day -day transactions. So one of the big challenges of data is to understand where the data actually resides and where the data needs to be used. So if you're an organization that uses multiple systems, chances are your data is going to flow between different systems. And so there's a couple nuances or things to worry about or think about as you think about data management from this perspective. First of all, you have to understand what the single source of truth is. Where does that data reside and, and where does the core heart of that data reside, even if it does transact or move between systems, where does the single source of truth reside? And you wanna have a clear understanding of what the single source of truth is for that data. The other thing to consider is that you need to make sure that you have the right data flowing back and forth between systems to ensure that you have the right data flows. So just as an example, let's just say you have a CRM system or a customer relationship management system, such as a Salesforce or a Sage CRM or whatever the case may be. And you have a sales rep that makes a sale and they, need to create a sales order from that. So that CRM system would need to integrate with your core ERP system to create a sales order in the ERP system using the information captured in the CRM system. So that's an example of one data point or an integration point of how that data would flow from your CRM system to your ERP system. That same action of the sales rep closing a sale also would probably trigger some sort of commission calculation. So he or she closed a deal worth X amount of money they're gonna get a commission of X amount based on a percentage or however you calculate commission that then needs to feed into your HCM system for payroll purposes. And it also needs to tie back to your financials so that you can track that transaction as a financial transaction or a liability that needs to be paid to that sales rep. So those are just a couple examples of how a single transaction or a simple process can trigger a number of data needs and data integration needs across systems so it's very important to have a clear architecture and understanding of what those different integration points are and how data is going to flow in between the different systems you might be using. So when you're putting in new technology as part of your digital transformation, one of the key things you have to think about is how am I gonna get the data from my old system into my new system? 
And that's a tricky proposition. It's a lot easier said than done. And quite frankly, it's one of the areas that companies overlook or put off too far in their transformation in most cases. So it's important to understand a few concepts here. First of all, there's the whole concept of data cleansing. So you've got your old data from your old system, and chances are that data has gotten dirty over time because transactions have been entered incorrectly or perhaps the data was entered incorrectly in the first place. But for whatever reason, the data has become corrupt or it's just not accurate. So you need to make sure you're cleansing that data before you bring it into the new system. Otherwise, you're just going to have some of the same problems in the new technology. So that's data cleansing. And then once you've cleansed the data, you also have to map how the new data is going to map back to the old data or the existing data you already have. So with new technology comes new fields and new data structures, and you're going to have to figure out how to reconcile that and map the old data fields to the new data fields. So for example, it could be something simple like a product ID number might be what you called it in your old system, but in the new system, maybe it's called uh, product numbering or whatever the case may be. But that's just a real simple example of how you would have to map those fields so that when you bring the data over, you're sure that you're bringing the data over into the right fields in the new system. And then finally, there's the whole concept of migrating the data and actually moving the data over. So once you've cleansed it, you've mapped the fields between the old system and the new system, now you've got to bring it over. And there's a lot of different tools and automation that can be used to bring that data over. It can also be done manually, but usually it's more effective to at least take a first cut at that data migration using some automated tools. That's a whole separate conversation that we'll save for another time. But in general, that data migration exercise is something that's very important to do. Now, organizations will typically do this data mapping and cleansing and migration process. They'll usually complete that data migration process very shortly before go live. Usually it's like the weekend before you go live on a Monday, for example. But that's just to bring all the data over to ensure you have a accurate data set at that point in time as you're bringing it over. But you also need to bring enough data over into your testing cycles too, so that you have actual data from your real world operations that you're testing out in the new system. So you wanna migrate your data over at least a subset of your data, even during the testing cycles or throughout the process, but also right before go live, you'd bring all of your data over. So that's the whole concept of data cleansing, mapping and migration. So once you've defined your overall data strategy, you understand the integration between systems, you understand the difference between master and transactional data, you've cleansed and mapped and migrated the data. Now we have to think about how are we gonna keep the data pure? How are we gonna make sure that our data stays intact and accurate throughout even post transformation or post implementation of new technologies? And the ways that we see the most successful organizations handle this is they institute more clearly defined data management processes and data governance. And what I mean by that is we talked earlier about master data. And so for example, customer master, if you have people that are touching the system that are entering the customer master data incorrectly, that's just going to corrupt the data and it's gonna perpetuate throughout each transaction that's completed. And every time they enter a new customer master, it's gonna create and amplify the problems. So you wanna make sure that you have very solid processes on how people enter data, what criteria they use, who can access the data master, and make sure that you have very strong governance around that because one of the biggest problems organizations have, especially when they're younger and they're growing quickly, is they just allow multiple people within the organization to touch the master data without any sort of governance around that. So the tighter you can tighten up those processes and restrict who can access master data, the more likely it is that you're gonna keep that master data intact. And then of course, you also wanna make sure that you're constantly looking at and cleansing and identifying issues with data transactions too. So for example, if a customer service rep is taking orders, but they're capturing information incorrectly or entering data in the wrong fields, that's gonna corrupt your database. And so you wanna make sure that people are well-trained and you're addressing the human organizational change component of data management as well. So data management isn't just something that relates to the technical data itself, it's also all the processes and the people touching that data as well that you have to think about. At the end of the day, data means nothing if you can't make use of it. And there's a lot of great technologies out there now in the form of reporting, analytics, business intelligence, machine learning, artificial intelligence. These are all great technologies that are meant to take advantage of data and to make better use of data. So whether it be through having a specialized or customized report that gives you exactly the information you need to know for your organization, or whether it's uh, 
form of machine learning or artificial intelligence that's taking data and looking for patterns and trends to automate some of your processes or predict the future, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure you've got clean data and you have good data processes that we've just talked about. On top of that, you want to make sure you have the tools that allow you to make better use of that data. So that's where BI comes into play. That's where analytics and all the stuff I just mentioned come into play as well. You want to make sure you have the right reporting analytics BI tools that allow you to make sense of the data because the transactional data isn't just there to be there. You want to make sure you understand and, and can make sense of it all. So when you're thinking about data migration and data management in general, it's important to look at that end state of what is it we want to get out of that data at the end of the day as part of our overall transformation. So I hope this has given you a brief introduction into what data management is and how it ties into your overall digital transformation. If you're looking for more best practices and more things to consider as you embark on a digital transformation, I encourage you to download our 2021 Digital Transformation Report, which is an annual report we publish each year that highlights some of the best practices that are most important to successful transformations. We also provide rankings and reviews of the top enterprise technologies out there, including ERP and HCM, CRM, supply chain management, et cetera. So I encourage you to check that out as well as some of the other resources I've included below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.